as it fights for its cultural survival, the need of the safeguarding of its artistic heritage and the need for community public spaces is more important than ever. To contextualize Bema, we need to look at the core of its raison d'être, which lies in, in its collection and which has its own history. A hundred years ago, philanthropist Philippe Tarazi founded the Lebanese National Library, collecting books and art to build a national public collection. By 1954, the Ministry of Education took over that endeavor by organizing annual salons and offering contemporary artists a special space to exhibit their works. Key pieces were acquired from these shows, as well as from art galleries and artist studios. It was a time where Beirut was the art capital of the Middle East. Despite the war in 1975, the gifts and purchases continued, and by 1993, the custodianship of this amassed selection was transferred to the Ministry of Culture the majority of which is housed at the UNESCO Palace in storage, hidden away. Imagine that the Lebanese public and art researchers are surprised at such a collection's existence. Fast forward to 2016, Thaleen and I were asked by Bema to visit the collection and assess it. The first thing we noticed as we entered the forbidding black metal door was the overwhelming smell of mold and dust. Paintings were stored tightly haphazardly on endless rows of shelves and in shocking conditions. Where do we begin, we thought. Luckily, the ministry had an inventory made in 1995. However, neither the format nor the content was reliable to complete our task. So we decided to build anew. To make sense of this collection, we categorized the works by era, by artist, and double-checked and corrected the details. We added condition reports, recommendations for restoration, and concluded with a selection for BEMA. So what is in this mysterious collection, obscured for seven decades? What unraveled was a marvelous showcase of the rich history of her and heritage of this tiny nation, including its past hardships and its days of glories. In the earlier pieces, we find an opportunity to retell this story while highlighting the important artists through portraits of pro prominent figures such as Fakhreddin II and Yusuf Beg Karam stem narratives of a dreamed autonomous state. These precious works also thread the Lebanese intellectual enlightenment, known as the Nahda, Renaissance in Arabic, when new ideologies like secularism, scientism, nationalism, art and culture flourish through mass printed literature propagated by figures such as Boutrous Bustani. Here depicted by Dawood Korm, who trained in Italy in the Renaissance style and who was the founder of the Lebanese studio art practice. In the late 19th century, Beirut emerged as a thriving capital, and this is explored through Habib Thur's canonized depiction of Bshara Avedision, considered one of the founding fathers of Lebanese urban planning. Who also, we also explore the second wave of the Nahda, spearheaded by a new generation, Gibran Khalid Gibran being a notable contributor. In this period, we encounter local imageries rendered by Fauvist-inspired artists such as Marie Haddad, the first known Lebanese female painter. During the French mandate, Lebanon's borders are defined and modernism in both lifestyle and artistic practice are well established. Important pa painters of this era include Saliba Dwehi, Mustafa Farouk, and Omar Unsi. Art maintains its Western influence with naive art, cubism, and post-impressionism predominating in the two decades post-independence. In the 1960s, abstract impressionism, a movement that the majority of artists adopted and relished on, we see the beginnings of the careers of some of the greats, such as Salwa Rauda Sh'er, Arif Reyes, Yvette Ash'ar, Helen Khal, Rafi Sharaf, and Amin El Basha, some of whose artworks can be found in institutions such as the Met, MoMA, Saint Pompidou, the British Museum, and Tate Modern. Of course, we shouldn't forget the marginal expressionists, Dadaists, and surrealists, such as Juliana Serafim, who equally flourished in this period, the golden age of, of Lebanon when Beirut was coined the Paris of the Middle East. However, this era was short-lived with the advent of the Civil War in 1975 that lasted over 15 years. As this young nation was being torn to pieces by its multiple warring factions, artists produced to recount these devastating tales, while others chose to work with abstract forms as they continued to evolve with their unique styles. At this time, the creative scene faced exceptional challenges with gallery closures, 
frequent event cancellations, and sporadic cultural initiatives. Post-war art is concerned with the process of retelling of these wounds, abruptly forced into a collective amnesia. Here we appreciate the photograph of Christian Catafago depicting an abandoned sniper base and Samar Muharbel's blindfolded man. In our selection, we also chose pieces based on themes that we felt would resonate with the public, people and places, images that remind us of our common love for this land, our folklore, our identity. For the amateurs of still lifes, this collection holds almost one still life rendering per artist, and, is and it's amusing to see the representation of this academic practice through each artist's signature style. Considered a niche, the art of calligraphy is also prominent in the collection. And finally, we have a wonderful section of 250 works on paper, like the Salwara da Shuker, which is similar to the one at, at the MoMA. We have one of the largest works by Laura Reyeb and a white section for artist Musa Tiba. The substance of this collection is evident. For example, Saeed Ail is represented by 23 of his works spanning four decades. And his works are very rare, as many were destroyed when his studio burnt down. New discoveries of artists that are unknown or forgotten and deserve to be highlighted, such as Espérance Reyib, who we believe was active in the 60s and 70s. We hold exceptional works by important artists such as Helen Khal, exemplified by this unique piece entitled Bikini, painted in 1968. And these, unfortunately, are examples of works from the initial inventory that we could not relocate. Who knows how many more are missing from this collection or where they could be. We will make it our duty to track them down to the best of our abilities. As an overview, we selected 1,275 pieces from 2,500, 210 artists from 400. The period span is from the 1880s until 2001. Of course, we have a few gaps to fill in terms of medium, such as photography. Some artists in specific categories need to be acquired. And as for era, we need to enhance the contemporary section. Overall, the collection truly represents Lebanon's classical, modern, and early contemporary art discourse. In 2016, Bay 